And welcome to the National Meat Treasure Podcast with your host, Sasha, a.k.a. Who am I today? Who am I today? What am I watching right now? A.k.a. Cloud Strife. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII, the remake, for the first time in like a year. Wow. Uh, that sounds I've been fun. off from work all week. That sounds fun. Yeah, just I haven't... I always feel guilty playing video games, but I think I'm going to start doing it more because my brain yeah, is very good, empty man. when I play yeah. video games. Um, I'm not going to... In respect of... One of the best, one of the humans that has lived as long as as she had, I am not going to take any fake name, any any double name of mine. It will just be in respect for Betty White, R.I.P. We didn't. I didn't expect twenty twenty one. Yeah, man. To end like this, but it should have. And I'm Joey Thriller. <laughs> all right, <baby. laughs> uh, no, let's talk about Betty White real quick because first of all. Um, you say something spicy about I don't know her. if this is disrespect. I, I don't know if this is disrespectful. I don't know. Let me know. So I sent you. Did I send you guys oh, yeah, that TikTok I did, this morning? Yeah. I did see that. And yeah. the worst part is that you sent that before she died. We had like no idea. Yeah, she was uh, I was at work. I yeah, I saw a TikTok this morning. Uh, it was one of those like random clips from a random, you know, bro podcast hmm. like ours. And I get a lot of those on my For You page. Yeah. We really talk about random bullshit. And Too many one of the random ghettos bullshit. in it. Oh, okay. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, well, there that's you it. go. Okay. I, uh, one of the clips sh- was about um, apparently the nudes exist of Betty White in her twenties, and these these two guys were just raving about Betty White's nudes. I did check them out. So go Google those, I guess. Go Google those, I guess. <laughs> Betty White does have nudes, and I saw that TikTok. Uh, I want to say when did she die? I want to say maybe it's seven o'clock now. I maybe heard the news at three. I think I saw this TikTok at about yeah. 10 I want to say, I wanna say about or three, four o'clock. Yeah, I don't so, know what you did. Six hours. You caused her death. <laughs> I didn't cause her death. These guys going viral uh, caused her death, I think. Really? Because I but, think you I mean, shared it with Or me. nothing. Well, I mean, she was 99. Yeah, like, she was on borrow time for like the last 15 years. Uh, Bro, that's, that's what wild. happens when you're an unproblematic. When you're a quiet and unproblematic white woman, you get to live longer. So, really long. Uh, that's what I'm and, saying. And though. keep your youth and, and your beauty. Because I did check out those nudes. I will say that. Oh. Uh, I immediately did it. Um, and not disappointed. Swing Thank you very guys. much, Betty White. Swing we those. appreciate that. You're the gift. You're the gift that keeps on giving. Throw because those. I really loved the Golden Girls, and like that. That's still my jam. Like I still will also, stop is, and watch. Is, is, obviously, I don't think either of you is going to have the answer to this question. But is hairspray based on that one story about Betty White? I never seen you ever hear that story about Betty White? She had like mm, a, mm, mm. there was like a TV show she was a part of and the TV show wanted to bring in, or Betty White wanted to bring in like black dancers. Mm. And this was like the 1950s, obviously. Mm. The production studio or whatever, like didn't want these guys brought in. And Betty White said, yeah. well, you're going to have to fucking suck it, bro. <laughs> these my niggas, bro. There's <laughs> four in them, gang. Like, and then, so, but that's like the, Basically, the premise of Hairspray. So I don't know if that was based on her life. Hopefully, but Hairspray is a sick movie. Hairspray Shout out to Seaweed's Waves. Fire! Can we talk about the dance moves on there? Yo, Black Excellence all throughout. Like literally, they just I go like, "Oh, the these play. are what the white kids are doing," and it's all nice and cute. And then, damn! Did you Black ever? Dancers. Did you ever see the play? Or just yes, the I movie? Have. I actually have seen it on Broadway. Movie. I've seen it on Broadway. That's cool. When was the yeah. last time you saw a play, dude? I've seen, I've seen one play I in real taken life. taken out on a date to Broadway. And that was probably one of the nicest dates I've ever had. Wow. She didn't even try to, like, and like yet- move on me. Like, like after. Even, like, she was just, like, it was really nice spending time with you and gave me, like, a little peck on the cheek. And I was like, wow. I feel, I feel like a lady. I feel really... Like, cared after. Okay, but you you didn't marry her, so apparently going to Broadway uh, wasn't enough to go back. She's still, like, she was a nice person, and that's where I'll leave it at. I'm not going to shame somebody based upon their looks all that much, but maybe I should. Wasn't my thing. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't my thing. Wasn't my thing. She, not a cute girl. No, um, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Kind of looked like a capybara. You know, like long snout kind of thing going on. Oh my god! Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know when like people like also mouth is kind of, like, pinch in, like somebody did this rodent. Yeah. 
Also, okay. for, for the audio listeners and maybe the visual, I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> Jody apparently popped some shrooms a while ago. So if that, oh no, my God, seemed a little no, slow. Didn't. You didn't pop shrooms? No, he didn't. No. Never mind. <laughs> or are you about to? Well, Is that what you're telling no, us? I don't know what y'all talking about at all. Oh, okay. Plead the fifth. Oh, well, I plead the fifth. fifth. We'll bleep all that I, out. <laughs> yeah, pleading the fifth. I am outright denying it. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, speaking of drugs. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of drugs. For the video. I mean, no one, none, none of my coworkers listen to this shit. So, um, yeah, I've been. Uh, so apparently, Detroit or Michigan is a recreational state as far as their med- marijuana stuff. So yeah. I cop some edibles. Uh, if you've been listening, you know that I don't do well with THC products. Um, or if you're just a close friend, you know how to do that stuff. But, you know, l- looking for things to slow my mind down a little bit. And I have had decent times on edibles before um, on the rare occasion I have them. Mm. Uh, mostly the issue with doing edibles in the past was bad environment. I wasn't around people. I wanted to be high sure. around. But uh, doing them by myself, I'm doing some just like some little five milligram gummies with a bunch of CBD. And uh, I've been doing them post gym. It's nice to relax because I wow. am really antsy post gym. That sounds nice. Yeah, man. That actually but really I do nice. have. I, so they were really cheap, and I bought too many. So I bought a ten pack of the five milligrams, a ten pack of some ten milligram indicas, and a ten pack of a eleven milligram. What is it? What is it like? Full spectrum, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. Basically so I think when us both. Yeah, I'm going to steadily boost up. So tomorrow, I'll probably try two of the five milligrams as opposed to one. See right. where that takes me. See where that leads to. Uh, 20, let's let's talk about this pandemic because it's not going away. But what have we gathered from it so far from 2020 uh, to now? As we are, for those listening, we are in the new year. You're not going to hear this episode till 2022, word, happy, but this is still 2021. Happy new year, Christmas bro. Eve. Happy or, fucking new fucking year. New year's Yo. Year. We didn't even say that shit. Oh, my God. Fucking happy new year. Out. Already, the air strap. Happy, New- <laughs> by the way, like, are you guys like not doing anything for New Year's? I'm working in the club. Yeah. I'm doing security and getting paid double. Chilling so one of I'm our gonna... friends came over. One of our close friends came over, huh? and um, our roommate's gone uh, for the. She's away for a New Year's, so we're just chilling. You know, got some champagne. Nice. Well, got some prosecco. You know, I'm a classy bitch. You feel me? <laughs> way better than what champagne. Are you, you know what I was thinking about too. We always think about like. Christmas as like the holiday you kind of lose as an adult because you know you, you eventually get to the age where people stop buying you shit and you're more about buying Everybody shit else. for your kids yeah. or younger yeah, yeah. cousins. Yeah. yeah. Um it becomes it's kid holiday. But nobody ever talks about like that first time you don't go out for New Year's. Cause I feel oh, like yeah. up until I was like twenty three, I was getting fucked up every New Year's. And <laughs> I mean, then we, after that it was like eh. We spent our New Year's together quite a few times actually, Justin. So being friends as we are uh, for over the course of the years, we've been at many parties, and all, all of them were debaucherous and terrible, and like had we had no reason to be there. But you're right, like as an adult, like you just get older, and then you go like, ah, uh-huh. maybe I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll pick up some grapes. Maybe I'll just like, <laughs> I'm just gonna chill at home and watch the ball drop. Because like, there's nothing that sounds that appealing to me. Because like, you're always bound to get into some kind of things on new year's eve just because of like the energy everybody's got like everybody's on that time so i don't know i don't miss it i don't miss it at all yeah i don't know i feel like maybe every i feel like there i think maybe the first year i because we've partied after this you and i you have splash champagne in my face but i think once Mm -hmm. they 23 24 Mm -hmm. that was like the first year where i was like i could just stay in and like the one year there'd be something going on, I'd party. The next year there'd be something not going on, I wouldn't party. Next year, but you know, like right. that's a definitely a holiday we don't talk about. Just like I was talking to a this girl the other day, and she's like 22, and she's like, "Nah, I'm trying to be drunk, hanging out somebody's car window." <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm difference. like, yeah, that's what I would also be doing if I was 22. But as a 34 year old, yeah, I'm not trying to hang out. Definitely no can't windows. say I'm going to. Definitely not. Yeah, no, dude, uh, I'm trying to see. Okay. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see how packed the bar I work at gets tonight because the cover is forty bucks. So I'm trying yo, to see how desperate these niggas are to party. That's people, a crazy cover. Yeah, yo, that's bars New Year's like though? really throw on the wildest New Year's covers for no reason, mm-hmm. just to limit the amount of people that come in. Like that makes sense. Yeah, because uh, I, I used it. to. You guys ever went to um, uh, what's that? The beer garden in Astoria. No, I'm aware of it. 
Okay. So Big Spot, a uh, really cool place, at least a few years ago when I was, was frequenting it. But I remember one time, like, they didn't announce it in time. I think they, they, they talked about it the day before that they were going to slap a cover on everything. And it was like, we already had the plans. All the girls were going there. You know, we're, we're all meeting up with who were we. And it was like $80 cover. I was, <laughs> I was like, fuck. Oh, $80? $80, $80 bro. I remember, and what year was this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is prior this? Joni, so this is eight years plus, like, at least. No. So, so ah. 2000, 2012, 2010. God, yeah. eight, who the fuck had $80 in yeah. New York in 2012? Moment, I had to go to the, to, to uh, an ATM in a shady party. Like, it ain't the same anymore, right? Like, everything, like... Like did I had you, to go to a bad part of the, the bodega. Yeah, no, I did. I because like we, I had a girl meeting me up, and she had already like went in because like I don't know, like. She, what she, was were you meeting up with? Uh, cast from Sex in the City because who the fuck has eighty dollars for a cover uh, besides listen, them? Yeah, was she just cool uh, with that? Bayside like, oh, kids, yeah, bro. Yeah. Bayside kids are weird. Uh, Bayside queens they they got they got bread in different places. Money. Okay. And you know they they were semi adults, so they had money, and or at least they were they Damn. were working towards it. I can't even think of an event I not, that I would. I was struggling like, to buy beer. <laughs> I can't think of any event in my life that I would have paid eighty dollars for. That was only one yeah. night. I uh, paid like I've paid less than eighty dollars for like four day festivals. <laughs> Listen, you know you're right, and like there's no reason for it, and like it's not like I got a drink off of it. Like there was like no drink tickets with it. There was like nothing. Like there was just like you you got to come in, and if you want to come in, this is how much it is, and. uh whatever fuck that place i think they stopped doing so, it because people like flipped out on them but it was uh, and this is a beer garden this isn't even like a club right this isn't no, like posh we're, we're I'm outside know. i'm showing my age we're outside in January, i'm showing my age for posh. new york posh. city is my mom posh. posh pacha uh pacha. that was a that was a place that was a place uh pacha and then we had uh kuko kuko bongo uh and what was another good one Copa Cabana. I'm really sitting here trying to think of something I would pay eighty dollars. They were so good. I would pay eighty dollars. I would pay eighty dollars for Slipknot. I would pay eighty dollars to see like Nietzsche on New Year's Eve, like blasting it off. Like everyone's doing coke, everyone's fucking drunk. (laughs) Like that's that's the party to be at, bro. You know, bro. You know, like you get those guys in the same room. There's a lot of yak going around. Like they they're they're high they're hype on the on the holiday. Yeah, I would probably pay eighty dollars for like any of my like legacy eighth grade bands, right. but I'd have okay. to be backstage because I'm t- I'm too black to be in the in the mix with the people. I'm not after that Slipknot show, dude, and all those like white guys in Scranton screaming uh Look screaming there. Pantera yeah, during the soundcheck. Uh, no, I mean <laughs> it felt insanely racist once everybody started shouting, uh, "Walk, spare. Like I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> uh, let's not do that. You know, that whole show is like was such a weird, like, wonderful show because, like, Slipknot was amazing. Uh, Gojira was fucking tight as hell. Uh, and then, like, what was How it? How much did we pay for that? I paid 20 bucks. Yeah, you were on the lawn. I had seats. I think the seats might have been 70. Wow. Yeah, you were there. Or am I thinking I also paid for somebody else's ticket, so I'm not sure. You paid, you paid for somebody else's ticket. Of, then it, I think it was both. I'm of not sure if that's the price of both or one. Bro, I would have paid thirty six dollars to be up there. It, it was, I, I it was seventy. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm alright. I like if, I did if if some cool if some if cool if our friends were going, I would pay eighty bucks for a Slipknot show. Okay. If a Slipknot show was down the street and I know nobody going, I would not pay eighty dollars. But if the boys were flying boys? in for Slipknot, no, I think I pay eighty dollars. We should have went to like the not fest, like the the one that they had in Iowa. Like, I mean, it was a tra- it was a tragedy just because of the the resources. But I would have fucking loved that shit. I don't give a shit. I mean, I, I could still go fire. because I don't have forty five children, so I'll probably be doing some weird shit. Do not go to not fest. This two twenty twenty two. Not go to not fest. Why we went we went to I gotta go to the gathering, bro. <laughs> I'm in the Midwest. He is in the Midwest. I go to the gathering. In the I'm home, in the Midwest. The home of the Juggalo. How much Fago is around I'm you? In the tr- like logically? <laughs> oh, like uh, actually, lots of Fago. That's a very big industry in Detroit. Right. Wow, that's, uh, that's the soda factory is based here. The factory's oh, here. Damn. Uh, a lot of there's places that like don't even sell like Coca Cola or anything. They just sell Fago. Obviously, they're in the ghetto, but um, or like you'll have like I don't more, remember Fago. I had it once, and I mean I it's remember. it's the same it's as any other cheap soda, right? like Trop- 
Yeah, it's like Tropical Fantasy, CNC, okay. any of those cheap colas, whatever. CNC. CNC. The Nutbusters. That's a throwback. That is a throwback. The Nutbusters. <laughs> the Nut What was the other one? Was it RC Cola? RC Cola was No, RC song. Cola was a normal-ish. And yeah, that was like low-budget Pepsi. Yeah, it it was bigger at one point, and right, then it just right. went it went from like national to regional to like yeah you know maybe like five diners have RC cola and like two gas stations. It's not a good cola. That's why it tastes like shit. <laughs> I remember that. I liked it, but like you know I, mean, I don't know how Pepsi's still in business. Pepsi's I like, garbage. I like Pepsi. Pepsi's. Terrible. I think RC is better than I don't Pepsi. Even drink soda. From what I'm remembering. Yo, You're soda kinda... is addictive. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't Too buy much, it. Bro. I don't drink it. But like, if it's in my house and I have some, I'll really be thinking mm. about it later. Hey! 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 Yes! <laughs> Hold on, wait, wait. Before we say anything, I gotta introduce this man. So, surprise, Uh-oh. listeners, since we didn't set this up, <laughs> we have a guest, longtime friend, uh, producer, sex icon, fashion icon, <laughs> and I guess new foodie. Uh, man. my man Leslie Hill, aka Comfortable Dude, has just joined us. <laughs> can y'all hear me? Most comfortable. Lay a dick out on him. Can y'all hear yeah. me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah. Right, good, good, good. Yeah. That, Damn. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Once again, I'm Les, Comfortable Dude, producer. Trying to get away from that for a little bit, but you know, trying really? something Damn. else. Taking a break from the music for a little while. Yeah, bro. I need to. I like really need to. I think uh, I, I think it was just like the I set goals for myself, and it was like once I kind of hit them just a little bit, I was like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> Let me do something else now. This nigga been saying he gonna take a break from music for the last decade. <laughs> so I don't I don't believe a word you're saying. You be in this group chat like I'm done with this in 2012, and I'm like, all right, cool, bet. Uh, and now you're getting paid for music. Yeah, you're yeah. you're collabing with other artists, so yeah. you ain't quitting shit, nigga. No, nah, that's the thing. Though. I'm not gonna quit, but you know definitely a break just like, take I a little really hiatus i get it yeah but you know yeah. it's funny like even though i'm trying to take your break from it it's like now that people are really reaching out to me like once we kind of like touched a little bit of success it's like i can't turn it down at the same time so right I yeah get sometimes you get talking to the yeah, so, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about this success. Talk about what you're working on, or do you want to be secretive? We have, we went to this interview with no plans. <laughs> yeah. So, right. what are you here to promote? What are you here yeah. to promote? What are you here to talk about? Let us know. You do the talking. Yeah. We just do the listening. Yeah. yeah. I um. Well, you know, I'm in a. Well, I mean, y'all know, but I'm in a group called Five World Order, and it started as a collective, and then it turned into a rap group. It was none of it was planned, and we kind of bullshitted around for a little bit, and then that turned into doing Afropunk, like the battle of the bands for Afropunk. And we won the first round of that. Then we did a project at the same time, won the second round. But I mean, we lost the second round, but they said everybody was so good that they sent all the finalists to Afropunk. So we did that. Hey. Yeah, it, that was, shit was ridiculous. But um, we did that. And then, uh, yeah, my brother, my well, Reg, like, I don't know if you guys know. He he would send our music out to like blogs and stuff, and then A and R found our music. And that led to a, a distribution deal with Empire. Yeah, wow, that's yeah. sick. We did that, and then our music got picked up for some TV shows. <laughs> like, got picked up for a bunch of TV shows. A couple of them didn't use the song, but they still sent that check through. So, hey, who gives yep. a fuck? Hey. <laughs> that's what counts. Yes, sir. Yeah, for real. So I was like, yeah. Once once that happened, it was like. I feel like once we signed that deal, I was like, all right, man, this isn't that for me. <laughs> like, for me, at least. I was like, all right. So, yeah, so you. Like Go ahead. Okay. So, was this your first uh, check cut from music in our friendship? I believe. <laughs> I really did. This year. 2021 was your first check cut from music. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. How does it That's feel? How does it feel? We're in, the new, we're, in the new, we're in the new year right now. It's about to turn 2022. Yeah. 2021, you just cut your first check from music. <laughs> what is 2022 going to look like for you? Well, now that I learn more about like entertainment and the business side of it, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to just sit around and just go to work every day. So it's like, all right, what else can I do? So I was kind of learning about content and no offense to anybody else. But I'm like, all right, everybody's doing a podcast. So what could I kind of do to set myself apart? Yeah. So it was like, um, the music is cool. I love doing it. But I kind of got the idea from watching uh, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown. I'm like, all right, well, I know it's pl- I know plenty of artists, photographers, rappers, 
stylists. So why don't I create something that I could kind of like give them an avenue to talk? So that's when I came up with the whole, well, first I was doing a podcast and then it wasn't that simple. It was like, all right, I got to find this person, that person, kind of get everybody together. This person living his life, he living his life, he doing his thing, he working. Well, so what can I do to kind of like bust it down to where it's just me and somebody else? So that's when I came up with the whole like, all right, interview series i find somebody that can edit it i mean that can shoot it i'll learn how to edit it and then i'll just find a person and so it's like but then it turned into yo you should start a food blog so it's like on my instagram story i was already posting the stuff that i would eat yeah one of my friends is like yo like you eat better than anybody i know which i don't agree with but <laughs> it turned into so like i kind of like i had a conversation with like one of my friends who's also in the group and he was like yo why don't you just do both. He didn't even know about Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> I was like, I thought of that. I'm like, yeah, like Anthony Bourdain doing that. Like nobody I know doing that. Like, so then, yeah. So yeah, this is like my first time kind of talking about it like publicly. Where I'm like, I, I have our yeah. The Instagram is a uh, comfortable food or something like that. Yeah, the comfortable Fire. food. My name is comfortable. The food. comfortable. F- yeah, and that is, so comfortable. basically, you're taking a you're, you're taking an action Bronson uh, approach to content creation. You're, yeah, you've shifted from rap to to foodie. Yeah, basically, is that what's happening right now? <laughs> basically, yeah. Because it's like, yo, think of the conversations Love that you had over with your friends over food. So yeah, I could just uh, take that same idea. Right? I love it, man. I just want to yeah, say, I love really um, good to see all of you. Yeah, I'm loving, uh, I feel like 2022 uh, kind of started everybody on a content creation path. You've mm-hmm. been creating, you know, music for, since before fucking MySpace at this point. <laughs> um, so you've already been creating content. Um, I'm glad to see you shifting gears and kind of just spreading your wings, yeah. especially now that you've accomplished your goals in music. So my question is, when you when you taking me on this foodie journey, when you taking me out to eat on the food blog, mm-hmm. sexy? Because I see I seen them rap checks, baby. <laughs> Take me out to dinner. <laughs> Yo, you better stop. Right. Nah, I saw you was out here with Christian. I was like, Yo, if I knew, I probably would try to set something up, man. Try to figure something Damn. out. Damn. Yeah, bro. He, yeah. Bro, I talk to this guy every yeah. single day, and I. Learned that he was down here when I saw the episode with you guys. That's the mysterious it. Justin. That's what he is. No, it really is. No, it I is. beef with him, actually. I'm going to share this with you, Les, just to show you like our friendship also. <laughs> this man lives in a recreational state. And he just shared that with us. Okay. He knows yes. how much fucking butt I smoke all day. Did the man bring me even one little crumb of an edible? No. And then he <laughs> flaunts it. And then, the, and then he flaunts it. On air, off air. Oh, look at all the stuff I got. It's so cheap. I got. Uh, well, <laughs> sir, I feel slighted. I feel affected. And in the words of Anthony Anderson, Pookie, we're going to burn this motherfucker down. <laughs> listen, listen. All right. So for, for both of you, for, for, so as far as the recreational thing, <laughs> look at him backpedaling. I just, here. I just, I just dropped the ball. Y'all know I don't smoke weed, so I would see all these billboards for like you know dispensaries, and in my head, <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> I would just think, oh, dispensaries. Right. Like you probably need a medical card, and I'm not gonna go through the hoops of getting a medical card, even though I love to try new drugs. But then somebody in a casual, somebody from TikTok was having a conversation with me, and they were like, Detroit's a recreational state. You could just walk in the dispensary and buy whatever. And I was like, it can't be that easy. Sure enough, it is that easy. You just give them your license. And they and you, they scan some things, yep. and then they open the door, and that's it. Right. Um, and as far as you're queer about me being in the East Coast and not saying nothing, I get like overwhelmed when I'm in the East Coast because I don't know who to hit up. Because like unless I'm like staying there for like a week and getting an Airbnb, mm-hmm. I gotta because I gotta figure out. Because I was at Christian's house in New, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Christian, 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 and my baby moms both live in the the woods of Pennsylvania. Yeah. So I was in the East Coast, but I wasn't really in the East yeah, Coast. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Fine, I could, bro. Yeah. you know, where, where, where you at? It. What, what part of Jersey are you in? North Central. I'm in Central. I can't remember. You're in Central, yeah. bro. That's like an hour. Like not even. Like yeah, <laughs> stop Thank lying, you. Justin. He yeah, I mean, I was to, thinking about like. Here's my thing. I was thinking about like getting an Airbnb and like, you know, maybe not. 
like just a cheap Airbnb in like the somewhere in the edge of, of East Pennsylvania, like yeah, yeah. maybe like Allentown or like Reading or something. But mm-hmm. I was like, I don't even know. Like, are niggas even excited to see me? Like, we're thirty five oh, now. You know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> it's not, we're, 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 we're in our thirties. No, no, it's, 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 it's not a sad. My way. son literally did a cartwheel when he heard you were coming. People <laughs> get excited for you. Okay, you got that little well, yeah, yeah. five year old boy. Literally going, Justin's coming. Can we share gummies again? <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he, he yeah, shared so his gummies. But he's, he's five, okay? I'm talking about the 30 year olds who have kids and it's the holidays. I'm like, do I want to like get everybody really? kissed you on the holidays? You spent Christmas with me. I get excited about you. Come on, you're my friend. And hey, I appreciate that. Look. It's love. Yo, this is the first time I've ever heard him like just speechless. He doesn't have anything to say. Because he knows it's real. <laughs> he knows I'm being wholesome and I'm being honest with him. I, I think it's, it's, <laughs> uh, my family actually got excited. Like even my daughter, who's like kind of more like she's only under a year, so she's kind of a blob. But uh, she also doesn't like like people. Like anyone reaches okay. out to her, she cries right away. Justin was like tussling her hair, you know, playing with her, talking to her. Nothing. So you can't say that no more. Wow. People it's get that, excited. It's that positive love energy she well, feels off me. Well, also, yeah. I had to she get does. back to the, the beautiful land that is Detroit, baby. I t- I'm home. I'm <laughs> home, baby. I had to come back. <laughs> How many people did you have to fight uh, to get into your building? Because, you know, it is uh, so rich. Don't lie to Seven. me. At least four. You know what, Detroit is not as that dangerous as people make it out to be. Um, uh, it's, if you are the- not, in- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I can watch, I can watch the criminal element as an outsider, but you know, I don't. As, as long as I'm not gang banging, I'm good. Right. So, <laughs> okay. Normally, is everywhere. Nobody, people don't really know that. Right. No, that's yeah, you're a civilian. Right. It's different. Right. Yeah. Except yeah. if you're in Gun Hill in the Bronx, because they always want the smoke. <laughs> Every day, anytime, they like, got a reputation. You can breathe, like what? Like and <laughs> oh, that and East Orange. No, East Orange. Those are the two yeah. places that I've ever, ever actually ever felt unsafe. unsafe. I've been you in know, a lot of places. East Orange. I know what you're talking about now because yeah, I, I live right near yeah, there. I felt. I feel very unsafe. I did not feel good. <laughs> like everything. Somehow everything was constructed really badly all throughout the town. Like plywood for steps, like I, like I'm good, bro. Like, and, and Gun Hill's got the same energy. You could be oh, like, wow, look at this wonderful, beautiful home, and then, ah, like, <laughs> you've already got like, people literally. See, being in in the different parts of the Bronx that I've lived in, um, I lived in on Grand Concourse, uh, right by Yankee Stadium, um, and then I lived, uh, well. That was pretty much it because I didn't I didn't last long. You know, <laughs> I had a lot of friends who lived on West Farms or, you know, like more more West and everything. And, it you know, it all feels like, all right, you know, whatever. I can do what I got to do. But, bro, even driving through Gun Hill still makes me look like, you know what? My I've got my lot, ass right? fucked up around here way too many times. <laughs> like, like, my ass whooped. Like not, it's not just because I'm like, ah, oh, it feels unsafe. No, it's because I've been told and made to feel that it's unsafe. I've I've never felt that many fists come at my face, and it was all because of you, Justin. It was all because Ooh, of you. Get into this. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so many years ago, uh, we don't really talk about you know music and all that, but we used to go to shows and whatnot. And it was this one particular show. We had a lot of fun. Justin had a lot more fun than other people. <laughs> and he went off, He went a little crazy. And I think he ended up clocking uh, a young lady uh, so bad that she just like, like, you know, you've seen it. Like when somebody's like spinal ca- column almost like collapses, like they just like turn into like bricks. So he did that. So nobody knew anything. We were just going on and, you know, we're, we're going about our merry way. And this is sidekick days. So, uh, <laughs> Les, I'm sure you know how he is with a phone. With yeah. his sidekick, it was like there was like a direct brain link. Like he could not be <laughs> separated from it. Like you could not like this man's surroundings just melt, like just did not exist. Like he was just <laughs> I'm on a sidekick and he had snake bites. So he's like, oh, huh. like just nervously like going through his thing. And so anyway, <laughs> I start seeing 
one person in front of me, then another person in front of me. And, and you know, these people are picking up random shit, like a two by four, a mop, <laughs> like a mop stick. Like somebody had like, like trash in their hand. Somebody had like a baseball bat. A, somebody took off their belt. So I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then I hear like in the, in the very lightest breath, that's him. The one with the sidekick. <laughs> And I literally, like, you know, like, uh, like, uh, what, in, in <laughs> Boys in the Hood, Ricky! <laughs> I did that to Justin. <laughs> I said, Justin! And he l- looked back and he's like, oh shit. And these are the days of girl jeans. So he literally just hiked them things up, like, even further, waddled the fuck out. And I literally, I, I, I'm remembering seeing this all, like, fly at him. And then I'm like running up to it because I'm like, like, I can't let him just like take all of this. And we had whoever we were with and it just went buck wild. I got my 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 light. Like, literally, that was a night that it could have all ended. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, these kids were they weren't <laughs> You're they were, exaggerating. Bro, You're what exaggerating. are you talking about? I'm exaggerating. Was, there was all, three groups all. of people that had to jump into random taxis because they literally saw us running from fucking people with fucking two by fours. Like, bro, don't say it wasn't that serious. Listen, That's no, you no, didn't get light all, lit up for it. I got let's, lit up for let's, it. Let's, let's, let's change the narrative. First of all, somebody <laughs> threw narrative. like a punk, a punk, a punk hardcore kind of show in their backyard. All right. Yeah. Uh, the, the owner of the home's mom was, I guess, giving out beverages, got caught in the heat of the mosh pit. I accidentally hit her. Don't make it seem like I just walked up and punched some random woman. <laughs> no, 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 no. Accidentally hit her. And then her, the, the she was friends of the the locals in the neighborhood, and they were coming after me. But you, so we were all walking in a line down a hill. I don't want to tell old stories like this, but <laughs> you and your girlfriend at the time were behind me. I was in the middle, and everybody else was up front. So I look behind me, and I see you and your girlfriend, and I just keep walking. I'm sitting on my phone, and then I turn around again for some reason to just make sure you guys aren't too far behind. I turn around again. Y'all are not in sight, and there's just 15 fucking black kids with fucking chains and bats, and I'm like, (laughs) where did my friends go? And they're like, hey, yo, and I'm like, shit, and I just started running, and I didn't know where you went. (laughs) (laughs) And I ran past the group in front of me. Being mobbed by Well, it's, it's, listen, it's fine. We don't have to talk about 2003 or whatever. I was, uh, was that was funny. I know y'all were like 16 in this story, (laughs) right? Uh, we were six, way 17 funnier. in Gun Hill, like yep. like had no business around there. Uh, no, we were we were like it, like early, like probably like twenty. We weren't even like drinking age yet. And um, I think I was like eighteen. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it was it was one of the funniest nights still. Like because I, you know, it's one of those things like you think about it, like how it plays in your own fucking head. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't feel safe. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> of all it's, people. Oh, well, it's fine. You don't places. leave the woods. But no, let's, let's put the energy I'll, back on. Like my bears. Hey, I just put want to the say energy back on being comfortable. Before you change the topic, too, I just want to say that story right there is exactly how I'm it. I, 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 <laughs> I cut you out. My bad. No, I said that's exactly how I know him. <laughs> Similar oh, yeah, no, story. Exactly. Because on my, yep. At yeah, the art side. On my I think phone. that's how I know Joey. I think that's how I know all of you. Yeah, yeah, I I, yeah. I remember meeting you many years ago, and I was like, you were um, you were on the tr- um, short tour with Existence at the time, and I was hanging out with these kids from Queens, I so, and yeah. I remember like y- precursors. You guys like stuck out yep. like a sore thumb for a good reason, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. because <laughs> it was like you know, bro, it was like vanilla milk like the entire show. Bro, like, and like, there was like these kids that were. Niggas. Shout out to these guys. We we uh, when everything else destroys or some shit, weed was their thing, and literally <laughs> the kids sounded like a pterodactyl. And I'm just like, yo, like I need to get out of this place. This is not where I grew <laughs> up from. I'm like, I need to get my ass back away from like Hudson Valley. And I don't know why I moved there, but I did. <laughs> Cardona's love of talking about 2002 metalcore to, to no one who was. Was <laughs> the funny thing the last what, two- time I saw Les in person um, was oh this is embarrassing to say running out of a venue trying not to get fucked up by a bunch of kids from New Jersey really uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot. Well, why would you? Why would you? Why would you air yourself out like that, Joseph? You, hey, you don't have to tell everything, baby. Uh, there was mad. Nick, we were behind enemy lines, and um, you know, 
sometimes Yo. some people you're with it be like that. You, you don't remember like they commit past crimes um Yo. you don't oh, yeah. you don't Those know you're ones. in the ops backyard <laughs> and they were praying for you to come to this show and you so happened oh, yeah. to randomly pop up yep. um yeah. smoke you guys shout listeners out, know I, like shout out to les because i'm still number? alive <laughs> shout out to les because you you saved my life before bro, hey, bro. Listen, I've seen none less. of this shit was my fault i just want to say that. none of it was my <laughs> fault i'm, surpri- you know, I'm mm. surprised boy you know, joey and les i'm surprised I'm surprised y'all two haven't uh, connected more. You you both make Shit. music. You're like across the bridge from each other oh, in Jersey yeah. and Staten Island. Like both got I, the same energy. Let's use this as a networking Sweet opportunity, time. even though Les is an empire. Like I don't, <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have my shit together. Like that's that's why I've, I haven't done anything. It's like not having my shit together. You know. Like, yeah, it's like no, that. No, it happens. You, well, you, you got to get it together by networking. <laughs> nigga, I know there's a lot of ways. Nigga, let me worry about my shit that I'm getting well, together. Uh, okay. Hey. Shit. Yeah. Listen, it's it's Just our shit now, anxiety. baby. Because whatever like, you whatever you do, you're taking me with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing the code. Don't hey, leave me in these trenches. I won't. I'm here I would never leave you in those you trenches. But I'm not ready. taking you with me. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm just waiting for one of you two to. To take the private jet to Detroit, I'll pack my bags. I'll be on there with you, and then I could, you know, just put this city out of my mind. Even though I love it, yeah, I'm rich now. I'm out. Of, I'm, I'm too high type bracket yeah. to be in Detroit. <laughs> Beverly Hills is next. Put me on the staff. Bet I got you. What would your title look like on that staff? I mean, I mean, I'm multi talented. I could social media director, uh, head okay, of security. I could do whatever you need me to do. I'm a multi talented guy. How about security of head? No. Um, security. <laughs> uh, hey, yo, you always take me out for dinner. Head. You always secure the head. That's what. That's your job. Yo, I, that's what my entourage that is a would good do. Job. Like, if I got yeah. to like a disgusting wealth and Joni died mysteriously, and I could live <laughs> my best life oh, in my linen suit, um, uh, I would have a, one single person. Doesn't matter gender, age. Doesn't matter. They secure the head always. They yes. always, always like a liaison town, to find your yeah. host. Like, yes, yes, yes. Every town I touch, bring him on. They just, they just want to know Big Daddy, bro. I, I'm, I'm smaller daddy now, <laughs> but they, they just want to know Big Daddy. Great like they just want to know. Yo, I know he does that. Why he says it? I'm surprised this this man doesn't have like some kind of like. Like, you know what it is? I think Drake is eventually going to discover male birth control and disperse it worldwide because he must have it already, right? Like, yeah. why does he only have one child? Right. He got he, he got male birth Bro. control. It's called money. <laughs> male birth control. Here's five hundred bucks, baby. Like <laughs> oh, Try five thousand. Yeah. Fifty. Did you ever see? We had to take it. Take there's an back. interview with Drake on. I think it's on Nardwar. And it's like 2000 and like very early in Drake's career. And Drake and Nardwar talks about Drake's uh, treasure chest. Drake, I mean, this was again, this is like 2010, 2011. Drake had like a treasure chest that he would keep on tour filled with bras that he would collect from women. That, I don't know if he slept with them or they just like threw the bras on stage, but like it was a lot of bras and a chest. I, I can't imagine how big that chest is now because it's it's probably Can three imagine? football fields at this point. <laughs> I got a vault full of those things now. Why? Yeah, yeah, but why weird. keep can't it? Wait till, can't wait till Les is outside like that on some light skin antics yeah. getting pegged. Oh, hey, yo. Hey, 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 yo. No, there's no hey. AO on this podcast. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, hey. just, Justin, <laughs> you Justin has get been pegged. writing for. You don't have to make us he's all. He's literally have been to get writing pegged. to get pegged. Literally, every man, every man that comes across. Yo. And and he just has to suggest it because plot twist, he's the one who wants to get pegged. He's always first wanted all, to get pegged. <laughs> first of all, first of all, listen, d- don't be a boring straight man. I'll take some peg if someone's trying to peg me. Like I'm, it's whatever. What? Everyone dies. We know this. But no, the only reason I brought that up. <laughs> The only reason I brought that up is because there's a story recently, or there's been a few stories, but they don't really go anywhere that say Drake likes to get paid and he likes to get his ass ate. Bro, and like the stories come out like twice a year weird. and no one, they, they, they gain no traction. They're just like one random, like if I sit on my explore page for long enough, there will be like a Drake gets, mod, Instagram model says she paid Drake, but it'll be like the 30th story on what, my explore bro? page on Instagram. 
He's, so I mean, maybe that's a light skin thing, you know? He's definitely getting. His maybe, ass. maybe it is. For maybe sure. it ain't. That's maybe it ain't. I don't know, man. Definitely. Yeah, without a doubt, getting his ass hit. But pegged, I don't know. He, he, that's I a different so. text, bro. I think I so. Mean, gotta be I think so. I was the most a lot of strength. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that. That sounds kind of accurate. Imagine <laughs> how much sex you're having is great. Since what? And dude, 2010, Drake has like. Since I remember 2009. I feel sore. Dude, I remember. Drake had a line. I forget what it was, but it was like, oh, you, it was like something, something, you nasty, like evil angel, the porn site. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, this man fucking real porn stars in real life. Like, I damn. A reference. What, a, what an existence. What an existence. <laughs> like, you know he's up to some extra shit. Oh, yeah, like, if you're fucking, because sure. I'm never going to have sex with a porn star. I mean, you know what? Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to manifest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to manifest. Also, it's 2022. I'm going to manifest. It's on the vision board. Annabella Danger, Abella Danger, and Kira Noir. Actually, no, Kira, Kira Noir is gay. She only yeah. does porn for work. Yeah. Oh wow. Misty Stone. Let's throw Misty Stone in there. Mm. We're manifesting Plus. porn sex in 2022. I'm a little jaded. Is there like a porn production company here? There has to be. Wait, Jade. Jada Fire, your your profile. You gotta update your porn stars, bro. There's there's, bro, there's she's the still, games out she's there. She's still in the memories. She's still in the spank bank. She will oh, always live we don't there. Need she, memories. She literally has a very beautiful pedestal in my mind. Like she deserves to be there forever. That's fine. I, I love how we always devolve oh, to porn yeah. somehow. <laughs> we're, we're, discussing, we're discussing men with nothing somehow. better. Let's to let's get. About. Let me st- let me steer this back more wholesome. So, Les, um, now you say you're creating food content. Now, I know you're going to stick with this because you have created food content in the past. Talk about your your old YouTube channel. What happened with that? You were you were a chef. Those were really high quality videos shot by I believe it was your was it shot by Tony? Was Tony shot by yeah. Tony? No, that wasn't an old YouTube channel. I'm gonna turn this right. That wasn't an old uh, YouTube channel. That was that was just content. So it was we were doing. Um, we had a song that I produced called Teriyaki. And we were like, um, that that was like one of our first like big singles where we knew that, that was the one. So we're like, all right, we had, um, I think we had a meeting with a PR company. Or I don't know if my brother just came up with it, but oh, no, I think we came up with it. We were like, all right, we need to have a month's worth of content. So like drop something every week. Mm-hmm. So to, just to promote the song. So at the time, um, I was, I think I worked at, I worked at a, I worked at a Zen Burger restaurant for like two months. So I like had all the, I, had, I still had like the chef's code and the, <laughs> the, the apron. I had all this stuff. I'm like, yo, why don't we do like a, a teriyaki challenge? But I was doing keto at the time. So I'm like, yo, we could do a teriyaki challenge, but do, do it keto do completely. Keto. Yeah, so we're like, all right, word. So Tony, uh, Tony came here. Tony came here and uh, set the camera, up, and we just shot it in like two seconds. And I like bought all the ingredients. I came up with them. Like, yo, whoever does the best, uh, whoever recreates the dish the same way, I'll, I'll make a shirt for you and send it to you. So it was like we shot it, and that 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 was the thing that kind of like um, kind of. Uh, planted the seed for like doing this whole like interview food type of series because it was like yo it really worked a lot of people were telling me like, yo that was funny because how tony edited uh, edited the video it was pretty funny like i don't want to toot my own horn but it was, and it was like naturally he just was talking no toot it was the just horn, him bro. And yeah right <laughs> toot the horn mm-hmm. but, um, that's, what, that's what you're here for to toot horns yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. You know what I hate about content? You. you know what I hate about content creation? <laughs> yes, sir. You know what I hate about content creation? I hate that you have to create the content, then have to create content for the content, then have to push the content out oh to God. a third party. Like you've <laughs> you gotta create the podcast, then you gotta make clips for the podcast, then you gotta like put the clips for the podcast in the right place yep. on top of you, you know, as you know, or at least me being a brand behind that so like you can go oh this guy's funny not just on his podcast but yeah. also on his tiktok and he's pretty on instagram it's a lot going in but i feel like i mean i feel like dude i, I seriously i gotta i gotta get a photographer bro i need to be prettier sure. on the internet you because sure. you you have photographers i see you out yeah. there you fucking blessed nigga everyone around is <laughs> talented go fuck yourself Yo, how crazy is that got lucky man got lucky praise be you manifested you're a talented individual and talent flock to you you're surrounded by stylists 
<laughs> you want to drop some names of some people you fuck with? You want to? I mean, oh, I know nah, Jacob yeah. is a photographer. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, shout out Jacob, Kenny, and Hassan. They're a part of DWO, but they branched off and started their own. Um, damn, what, do I, what would I call it? Like a multimedia company where they do photography, videography, and editing. And then, so they, uh, Guinea shoots on film. Jacob is really good with the uh, cinematography, videography, and the editing. And Hassan's just a straight uh, photographer and videographer. And they, um, they went from, I think, the summertime, came up with the idea, to now, like, constantly working with artists and shooting for um, fashion brands and everything like that. Uh, Tony Stigel, the graphic designer, videographer, like, you name it, he can do it. Shout out Reg, my brother, rapper, extraordinaire, producer extraordinaire, audio engineer extraordinaire. Yeah, and I can keep going. Julian, uh, I'm not forgetting people. Yeah, Danny, Jacob, everybody raps. What would you say to uh, Lamar, someone trying to get around more creatives like myself? Uh, network. <laughs> Network, man. Like, well, obviously, nigga. Because <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have this squad. Like I said, we've been friends for a long time. You didn't yeah. have this squad up until, what, like 2018, 19? Yeah, probably like. Where did these people come from in your life? We know Reg is your brother. Where did everybody else flock from? So, Reg, yeah, Reg is, Reg is my brother. I, me, I I used to be in the metal bands and stuff. I used to play bass. I used to play the bass, as you guys, you guys know. But I guess for mm-hmm. your listeners, like, I started making metal music. I was, and that's how I know everybody as well. Um, yeah, and then I got tired of that. Told my brother, like, yo, I want to I wanna rap and make beats. I was rapping at the time. My brother was in high school. My brother's uh, seven years younger than I am. So thank God for thank God for the youth, man. If it wasn't for them, yo, I'd be dead in the water. I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, over oh, yeah. time, yo, like, it's, it's crazy. But um, over time, he kind of started to get them to rap. And, like, they started taking that shit serious. Like, Jacob and Julian did not rap at all. Didn't make beats, did nothing. But after watching Reggie, Reggie kind of showed them how to, like, record themselves. Kind of like how to make songs, kind of. But, then, yeah, and then it just went from there. Like, people started picking up stuff. They watched us because uh, I shot I shot Reggie's first video. I edited his first video. I learned how to engineer. Like, we literally learned how to do everything ourselves. So, like, through them watching us, they were like, well, shit, if I could just pick something up and do it, fuck it. So I went from there. Like, we had another friend at the time who, like, you know, he doesn't really, he doesn't work with us at all anymore. But he's, he's become a photographer. He picked up photography at the time. A couple of the artists that I got really close with, they know my brother. And then uh, they started to learn. Like, as I got better as an actual producer, not a beat maker, where it's like, oh, like, I know how to slap this together. Like, no, I can really, like, make your song for you. Like, my brother introduced me to these people. I started working with them. And it's literally, like, networking in the sense of, of the word, where it's like, oh, yo, I need beats. Oh, yeah, let's work. I would refuse to send people beats, though. That was the difference. I'm not sending you a beat. I'm not sending you stems. I'm not sending you nothing. If you want to work, come to my house. So then they would come to my house, and then it's like, let me tailor this for you. So it's like, I work with mm. that person. They liked what I did. They introduced me to they people. Now I'm working with they people. Now they introduced me to they people, and so on and so forth. But, but it really was just like leading by example. These people see like, yo, whatever we picked up, we, yeah, you know, they, they say um, jack of all trades, master of none is a bad thing. It was like, no, nah, it's great. Like, you become well-rounded. And then over time, you could just start to drop off those things as you meet other people that could do the, whatever that thing was that you picked up. They don't have to do it anymore. Now they know how to do it, but you have an eye for it. And you're like, all right, well, you can direct something with the person or help them edit it or whatever the case may be. But it's like, yeah, it was just like in the sense of the word. So like in Detroit, if you say you meet any rappers, like if they have any shows, Go to the show, like, yo, like, yeah, I'll pull up, sure. Introduce yourself to people, like, yo, like, you see them talking to somebody, like, yo, oh, yeah, my name is Justin, or whatever, whatever you introduce yourself as, you know, you say, Trot, whatever. Sasha. Yo, Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm starting to learn about Sasha, <laughs> though. 
But yeah, like you can, you can be like, hey, I have a podcast. Like, oh, like what do you do? Like, oh, you don't have to say what do you do, like make it like show and tell. But then it's like you know, as the conversation goes on, like they're like, oh, I rap. Oh yeah. Oh, I got a podcast. Or oh, I got. And then you just end up linking with people like that. Like, but you gotta. I, I was telling the dude at my job. He was saying that he rap. And I was like, well, like what do you do? And he said the same thing you said. It's like, how do I link with people? Yo, go to shows. That was the only thing that helped me as a producer, though, too, That's like meet other producers. Go to shows. I would go to New York. Any beat show. Yo, New York is holds it down as far as, like, producers. They hold their producers down. They care more about the producers than the rappers. Like, they'll have mm -hmm. a full show strictly for producers. I would go there. One of my friends, shout out Omar. Nothing new. Omar. I would go there. The boy. Yeah. That's bro. Yeah, Yo, he's the dude. He's the bro. bro. I love that man. But like he put me onto a lot of people. He literally just did that for me. Yo, come to my show. He's a good man. He's him. good for that. Great, great person. Bro, yeah. I always tell him I owe everything to him. Everything. He showed yeah. me how to engineer. He showed me how to master. He showed me song, song structure. He showed me. He's a so brilliant much, person. Bro. He's genuinely Fucking somebody bro. who I'm actually like. Uh, we've actually talked about having him, and he's uh, he's. We're just trying to find out the time because you know his life is uh, is quite busy right now. But, yeah, uh, yeah, he's another yeah, one. Man. Omar, shout out to you, brother. Uh, new, I'm gonna chop it. I'm new. Color. I can't remember. It's it's this unique way to spell it. Spell it. Oh yeah, it's uh nothing underscore nothing -E -E. new. U E. Yep, nothing new. Yes, nothing new. Very very talented. Uh, that's another person. You know, I play. I did music with, and he was the same way. Even then, like you know, yeah. and, and he was a young person then, where he was looking to network with people, network with creative yes. people, like regardless yeah. of the, of of, of where that person is in a band, you know, because you know he's um, he's got some strong leadership skills and stuff like that yeah. that he kind of exhib exhibits a lot, and he was kind of the leader for his band, and you know, in you know, and a little bit of guys who weren't as organized, and he was like, we gotta like hit the note on all of this. Shape. Yeah, yeah, and I was kind yeah. of the same same person for my for for my band. I had to kind of be that, like we got to do this, guys. We got to do this, and it always uh, had, so that's it how me and Omar linked up. Yeah, shout and out like, to go, go to truck, like yo, like that's that's another thing that's good too. Like um, like they said, like just exhibit that. Well, not to you, but you know, to your listeners, whoever's listening, just exhibit leadership skills for sure. Because it's like, yeah. I would look at Omar like I don't feel like I have that passion for music that he does but then oh. over time i started to learn that like my passion is different it isn't it's just I'm not passionate yeah. it's just different mm -hmm. like and i exhibit yeah. it differently when i'm interested in it's different but it was like we could still sit down like i would go to his house all the time just to make music but then we would sit down and just yeah. end up talking about whatever and then having like an actual in-depth conversation oh, that we learned both learned from you know, and, and it kind of it, it lends itself to like, I don't have any people in my family that are musical. It seems like you have some people, and I know for a fact Omar, like even his parents are are very, oh my God. like yeah. you know, you know they're into uh, you know, just like really amazing things. They look at percussion in such a different yeah. way than than other people do. They look at the rhythm section, and and that whole family's like into they, it. They were so in a like, band together. You know, me just seeing parents. this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and he's he, and he's an incredible drummer too. Yeah, he, yes, he's you know incredible. it's somebody who. So like I think that's the the other part where it's like uh you know maybe if you didn't have the people that kind of match that same energy as you grew up and people who like really dived into something they cared about maybe you know music being the thing that we're talking about like yeah. it, it wasn't like that for me so like seeing people like you know even Omar like I was like oh that's where it comes from like yeah it's yeah, all that yeah, tenacity cool that see. love that that brilliance yeah. and music because you get like he, he's one of those dudes that you can talk about so many different things but like yeah if you you just talked about the stuff that he was interested in at the moment and and sometimes it's fleeting for him because he's an artist that changes so much yes, yes in in his own ways and and that's what growth is right so like yes. i i respect that as well and i've seen you you know grow because you you are you know I, I, how old are you guys i'm 29 I feel like now. i met you yeah. when you were Okay, so you, you, you were, were a little kid, younger than me when I met you. You were a kid. Uh, <laughs> so, like, you know, like seeing you grow up and, and being the, the, the artist that you are today. And, you know, it, you know, we don't talk every day, but uh, I can tell you this much. Uh, your boy Jay, uh, like, literally just touts your and throws you, 
like literally hands you your roses even when you're not here uh, <laughs> because he has no reason but he like l- full on just <laughs> wah, 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 like just like oh, I love <laughs> wow oh, you look at some sucking dick yeah a little bit but it, um, listen, listen, I, I, dro- I dropped niggas. I sucked your dick too. Like I, like I was like, yeah, I love Lance. Like, cause he's such, he's such a like warm, like literally. I I've hung out with you in Times Square in one of the coldest yes. Jan- Januarys yeah. that I could ever remember, and yeah. you still felt sunny, my dude. You still <laughs> felt. Warm. I appreciate you that. I was wearing dude. shorts that day. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, that you were buck wild, bro. You gotta yeah, leave that to the Yakubians, bro. That that's Yakubian <laughs> bullshit, bro. <laughs> Yeah, like you, yeah, like yeah, bro, like well. being out here as deep as I am in Yakubian ter- territory. <laughs> like you see yeah. shorts, and I said that to my wife, and and sometimes I forget my wife's white, and she's like, "Wait," but I'm, I was like, "You know, white men are really different, right? Like they're very it's different. Truly. They're like a different breed yes. of al- they're like aliens." And she's like, "Okay, yes. I get that." I was like, "Look," I was like, three people. They just passed us. What's the, what's the temperature? We're like bundled up, like shivering, and they're in shorts, like just walking yeah. to the chi- like going to the Chinese food spot. Like, bro, like yeah, slides have some decorum, bro. Room. Like, <laughs> hey, put on fucking like decorum. women Uggs and like be like, what up? Like, no, like go back the fuck inside. Like, <laughs> 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 sorry, I got a no, little, man, I really, little deep. I that. really appreciate that because like, like you know, as an artist as an artist and I like Joey, please jump in here. Like, you know, it's like, like to, to add on to the, the fleeting thing where it's like, sometimes, you know, when you have those fleeting feelings, it could cast doubt. And you're like, damn, what the fuck am I doing oh, yeah. this for? This don't work. Mm-hmm. You, you can show people yeah. your music. They like, yo, this is dope. You're like, man, this is ass. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. yeah. This is <laughs> ass. Like, oh, like, I don't like this. I don't. And it's like, it's yeah. easy to get like super down in yourself. But it's like I definitely feel as though like a key part in like you know the, the growth of our relationship was like he would be like yo man shut the fuck up or man shut up yeah, or, yeah whatever <laughs> like yeah. man I'm tired of this nigga you fucking six five you talented this nigga fucking hazel eyes and- soft poop pools of honey. <laughs> And you're in, in the sockets where your eyes go. You've got yeah, a it's, it's, soft, sultry voice. Like you, you never. I've known you since you were a little boy, right? Yeah, I never heard your cute. voice crack. You know how many times my voice cracks at 34? Like multiple times because I have shrieking volumes, bro. Like you, sultry, soft. You, you know who? Uh, you remember Jason? You remember uh, Jason, uh, little guy, uh, tattoos everywhere, had a tattoo yes, on his head? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. He's yes, another yes, one yes. that surprises me with that soft, sultry voice. That it comes voice, out yeah. of nowhere. I, have you heard how deep Shout that motherfucker's voice too. goes? Yeah, he, Yo, he, he does rap. Uh, he, yeah. he, I, I, I didn't flame him because he's my friend, but it's a lot <laughs> like in that corpse lane, and that's not yeah, my thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, that, like, <laughs> yeah. very gruffy, gruff, gruff. Yeah. Like, not my thing. He's my dude. Yeah. I love that man. But yeah, that, I've known him since he was a little boy, and he could drop his voice like four octaves. I'm not even fucking shitting you. Like, his voice is crazy, like, like I can't. Like, it sounded yeah. like <laughs> I don't know. Like all the struggle and all his family that you know, being a Polak in Pennsylvania, probably just like forced up on his okay. his fucking brain, and it just came <laughs> out in that voice, bro. Listen, I, you I was, you're you're just. You're just gonna lose testosterone. As you've already had kids, your body knows you've served oh, its know. purpose. So now your testosterone is just gonna drop. I hope and so. You're gonna, your voice is gonna get oh, shorter, shit. and then it's, T, it's uh, TRT time. That's all. That yeah, is. it's TRT time. That's it. I, Dude, well, nah, I punch nah, my crit- punching. Uh, can I gloat for a, like man second? I punch yeah, my man. heavy bag off of the hook. Okay. I okay. hit it so damn hard, it just went oh, boom. I was like, oh, oh. Like, <laughs> that wasn't that, man, that that wasn't all that manly, <laughs> but. I, I felt very, you know, powerful after that nice little workout that I had, and I needed to get a lot of aggression before the new year hits. Good shit. Bro. That's all you need sometimes. Listen, uh, yeah, Cardona is the opposite of me in that he very much leans into being an old man. I am running from it. I'm trying, constantly looking for steroids. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything to keep me young and youthful. So I'm going to be, I'm going to look good for pretty much till the end of time because that's my focus. Also, as a sexy content creator, got to stay hot forever. (laughs) Um. (laughs) We can do this. We can get you some surgeries. Here's what's, here's what the pod's going to do for us. We're going to manifest us getting a trip to Columbia because surgeries be cheap out there. And we're going to get you everything you need, big boy. Everything on NMT coin. Mm -hmm. 
Please don't. The future. Please don't. <laughs> Listen, please Let's don't guess go what? over there and die and bleed guess out what, on the table or some shit. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Guess what, Les? Yo. Because you you have been Beauty a guest on Spain, our show. Beauty is pain, baby. You're, you've yeah. been a guest on our show. You are now a billionaire in NMT coin as well. Congratulations. Yes. Um, <laughs> we have just forwarded that to your account. It probably equals enough for a cinnamon twist at Taco Bell. But we love it. Hey, Real quick thing about uh, Bitcoin and all that stuff. Um <laughs> I just no. I I heard something yesterday that basically they made all cryptocurrencies. I didn't research this at all, but I basically heard something that in China they made all cryptocurrency illegal, and it causes oh, like yeah. like people who are rich are still rich, right? But the, the poor yeah. people who are investing to try and be rich, yeah, yeah. they're now super poor because they put pretty much all their money into something yes. that's illegal now, so they got sure. nothing in return. Yeah. So now there's like this giant, um, you know, homeless crisis in like China right now. Oh, well, and I'm hoping a, that happens for America. There's been a huge homeless crisis for America. Dude, I'm, I want, I want like more dystopian shit to happen in America because I feel like bro? I don't want, ever, I don't want everybody to build and succeed. I want it because you know what it is. I've bored. lived down in the gutter my whole life, and I want people with me here. All right. Yeah, that's so why you want some all tent city. The pandemic for four, four, four <laughs> <and> <laughs> oh, Listen, we both grew up in New York City during the same motherfucking time, and Tompkins Square Park was a shanty fucking ville. Like there yeah. was tents in that fucking park. That yeah. shit only changed all in right, 2010. Right. Like that literally, <laughs> see, like when they had to remove all the crackheads out of the area. Like stop, bro. Listen, that shit was awful. But listen, listen. No, it wasn't awful. You know why? I'm gonna tell you why it's not awful. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why it's not awful because. In New York, you know, we used to hang out between, you know, Union Square Park and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, St. Mark's, right? Tompkins yeah. Square Park, those those areas. Yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, that's about maybe like a 10 blocks of separation in, in the middle Lower of Manhattan. Manhattan. And a lot, of, a lot of homeless people between here and there. Oh, yeah. And I remember there were years we would just hang out there, do nothing, drink in the daytime, whatever. Just fucking stupid kids. But I always saw the, the same five couples... Throughout all those years, they were homeless, they were begging for change, but it would be the same five couples, two of whom had a dog, and they never yeah. split up the entire time. I left New York, I came back, I didn't see them again, I don't know where they are, but it taught me a lesson that all that matters is family, and you guys <laughs> are family. <laughs> so I want us all to live in a tent city together. Oh, <laughs> that is a giant piece of shit. That's what he is. <laughs> He's a giant piece of shit. Literally oh just saying God. that these fucking crust punks had a better life than all of us just because they had they shared the same can of dog food between the three of them. Oh, Shut up. <laughs> Listen, we were we were basically we didn't have the look, but we were basically all crust punks. And I tell Bro, people this to the like that. I, I, Listen, I've told people this since I was a kid. I don't know if you guys remember, but I told people in Pennsylvania, I was like, I'm not used to the kind of because in Pennsylvania, that was the first time I was exposed to people who Talk shit behind each other's backs. Oh. Like I never, you know, I'm a New Yorker. Everyone says what they feel immediately, even to oh, their yeah. own detriment. But in Pennsylvania, a lot of people talk behind their backs, and friendships person. are over. Friendships are over, like behind someone's back before they're over in the front. Like yeah. two people yeah. cannot fuck with each other, but act like they're besties for the gram, yeah. act like they're besties for the sake of the the better the, the group they're hanging out with, but really don't fuck with each other, wow. and they won't separate until I guess there's a more diplomatic way to do it that may not come or might come in years politics. later, and. Wow. You know, yeah. in politics, yeah. And I would always tell people, I was like, I don't get this because I'm from New York. You know, all my friends were broke. All my friends were homeless. If you bought a $5 foot long from Subway, it mm -hmm. was, you were only eating three inches and you were giving the rest to your boys. Yeah, and that was it. All, like, that was. In it. Yeah, for sure. And that's how we have all crafted our loyalty to one another. Yeah. And I don't really know how I was going with that, but that's a fucking wholesome <laughs> note to end no, on. No, no. You, <laughs> you know what it is? You got five bucks. I got five. We got five bucks. That's we how we treated bucks, each other when we were kids, man. Yeah. Like, we got this. Like, like, and, you know, you know, a lot of times I ended up having, you know, like, some extra cash. Like, it was always something that, like, it never really bothered me to, like, these are my boy. These are my friends. Let's eat. Like, what the fuck? Like, or like, you know, like, let's. Hey, do we do need like some beer? Fuck it. Like, let's do that. Let's go. You know, even the sh even buying tickets for stupid shows, like you know, that yeah. we didn't need to go. But like, that's how it and always it, is. And it wouldn't bother me. And it wouldn't bother me to live in a tent city with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's where. And on that note, <laughs> and on that note, this has been the National Meat Treasure. Les, take us out. What are where, where your socials? Where do you want people to go? Where do you want people to find you? Everything. List it all. Everything is comfortably good. <laughs> <laughs>
you you name it, it's comfortable, dude. It's spelled the way it's spelled in the, the God's English. Please follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Look me up. My artist name is Comfortable Dude. Everything is one word. All of that, yeah. Please, thank you for having me. Comfortable Dude on Spotify, Instagram. I don't know if you have a Twitter. All of it. Twitter. Oh, we got to throw you yeah. on, the, on the Spotify playlist now. Oh, yo. Yes, yeah, and uh, some music. music up there, yes. A lot yeah, of and your band or your group. We yeah, do have a Vibe playlist World that Order. we put out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vibe World oh, Order. Please. Yeah, Vibe World Order. Um, Vibe with a V, on World Vibe Order. Vibe Everyone Vibe follow Vibe that. Order. So y'all go here. Yeah. Yo, yeah. please. Yeah, please. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I know this is like last second. I was trying to figure out. I don't know why I didn't think of the fact that me and my brother just have like a ton of microphones here. I was like, I don't think I have <laughs> Like, you sure I can't yeah. use my phones? Like, no, nah, you need a mic. And I just text my brother. He's like, everything's there. What the fuck are you talking about? So yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah but thank, thank you so much. Too busy being rich to even know what your equipment, nah. what your equipment is. I wish. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I wish. he's gonna take us on that jet, and and this is something that I did want to want to end with. We should start a fucking TV channel. We got all the resources, bro. I like you this. just named all of I them. Like where this is going. Yeah, I really like this. an yeah. internet oh. TV channel. You get a podcast. Yeah. You get music produce production. You get some classes. You get some fucking drama. We can throw anything in there. We, we can are throw a network. Ju- we can make yeah. Justin the like li- like the Bachelor. I like. There that. you go. Bro. I wanted to say yeah, Julie Detroit Detroit is got- on the we road. got porn mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. when all my hoes want to be on video. Right. Right. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't have any hoes. Earth. And on, the, on that note, not a single hoe to be at. Don't lie. It's New Year's Eve. Network. Don't lie. Shout don't out. go in with that. But if you want to be my hoe and you are listening, because we did gain a couple YouTube. <laughs> so in the last like 24 hours, I've gained about a thousand TikTok followers. Oh, and every time we gain about a thousand TikTok followers, we gain at least a couple of YouTube followers. So if you are subscribed from my TikTok to the no, YouTube and you, you are trying to be my hoe, yeah. hit the DMs. <laughs> we can make some DMs content together. I'm open. networking right now through this podcast. DMs are open, ladies. DMs are open. Are open. DMs but for those who open. don't have me on TikTok, for those who don't have me on TikTok and just found this through YouTube or a random, uh, you know, fucking podcast suggestion, follow me at thin.cruel.lips. Follow our... Uh, on Instagram and TikTok, follow our Instagram and TikTok for the pod at National Meat Treasure. Also on Facebook, even though I don't really know how Facebook works, but at National Meat Treasure on there too. Um, also rate, subscribe. I know I said this in the beginning, but start start rating the pod, baby. Start rating it so we can get into more people's algorithms. Five stars or one star, whatever you feel about me. Um, yeah, do that. Anybody this. else? This is anything? just impressive as fuck. Like, you just like, you're just made yeah. to do this. I just want to say. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah my right. daughter my daughter my daughter was like why do you have two tiktogram two instagrams and two tiktoks i was like don't worry about what i do <laughs> right? thank you again les it's been a fucking pleasure yo uh seriously you guys have a f- wonderful happy new year yes, uh happy I, new year i'm happy too. about this pop. we're about to hit 50 bro yeah. Uh, so, is, uh, uh, love to everyone out there. I hope all of you get what you were supposed to get, and I hope this year's a lot better than last year. R.I.P. Betty White. I love you, girl. Yes. Oh, yeah. Man. Did you guys talk about that? <laughs> I know you're trying to end this, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did. <laughs>